I'm Jordan Ezes, and uh, in the summer school, I gave a presentation about uh, zero-knowledge proofs. Zero-knowledge proofs are a set of cryptographic techniques that uh, allow us to build very advanced privacy-enhancing technologies. In particular, they allow uh, users to prove um, attributes or things generally about their secrets uh, without revealing those secrets. And therefore, zero-knowledge proofs are used to, for example, facilitate online uh, secure elections, or digital cash, or uh, privacy-friendly authentication and authorization. These techniques are very powerful, but they're also quite notorious in, uh, in people thinking that they are very complex. But in fact, one, once one starts uh, looking at the details of the protocols, uh, they uh, are quite simple, and within three hours, uh, I was able to uh, tell students uh, both how to reason about the security of those proofs and then how to actually program them. Uh, and the final hour was indeed dedicated towards um, providing a lab where students programmed uh, such, uh, such techniques. And indeed, I think they, they kind of all delivered. Uh, we had some very interesting uh, talks. I arrived on the first day uh, to hear a lot about the Estonian infrastructure, which is always interesting because I think it's one of the most advanced uh, e-government infrastructures in the world. So uh, it's good to, to get an update about how it works and what the issues are there. And then the, the international speakers that followed after that were also very high caliber. And uh, I'm very interested in all the issues relating to uh, malware and to the attacks and cybercrime that we covered yesterday as well as the issues of network measurement that we're covering today. So overall it was uh, very positive and I think both the local and the international speakers were very strong. This is an international community and I think many of the, the students coming here probably are very early on in their studies. So being exposed to uh, very high caliber speakers make them realize this is a, you know, a big topic, there are huge international communities and they really get exposed to, to excellence. I think some of the speakers you got uh, both local and international, are truly internationally very well reputed, extremely knowledgeable, and are producing research at the highest level. Uh, so I think that the, the students have the ability to be exposed early on to such high caliber speakers, and you know that will raise their expectations when it comes to their work, both about the quality of the work, but also the kind of ambition that they can have. And I think that's very important when people study for a PhD, to have a very high ambition to solve very important problems. Well, as I mentioned, so Estonia has the reputation to, to already be using technology very intensely as part of government, and to some extent, Estonia has a lot to teach uh, everybody else in, in the world about how to do this effectively and how it can work. Uh, so in that sense, I, I would actually be taking lessons back uh, to the UK from, from Estonia. Having said that, at the same time, uh, Estonia is able to take risks. Uh, it's a small country, so things are more manageable, I guess. Uh, it's not really clear how the experiences in Estonia or the risks that could appear associated with using technology so intimately as part of government uh, could materialize at a much larger scale or could only be visible at a much larger scale if we take these lessons and apply them to, to the UK or the US. So, so some caution is required, particularly when one goes uh, to, to digitalize very important processes like elections uh, or taxation or, or other things. There has to be an understanding that this is a risky activity and there have to be mitigation alternatives in case something goes wrong not to actually lose the whole uh, process in, in, in the process of actually digitalizing it.